Hey guys, it's Matt. Look what I found downstairs that needed to be dusted off. A book that, oh boy, I've had 30 years, I guess I've had this. Robert Collier, The Secret of the Ages. One of the original books that predates The Secret, which I think was the early 2000s, about the law or power of attraction. Now, there was one book that started it all, I think, prior to this 1929, Robert Collier, Secret of the Ages, has the Sphinx <laughs> right on the cover, was this book called, what was it I wrote, I have it here, um, Wallace Waddles, <laughs> say that three times, Wallace, oh boy, yeah, Matt just dropped a three, I guess, um, The Science of Getting Rich, it was called 1910. The science. So I have the book here in my hands, guys. I haven't read it for who knows how long. I've probably read it twice, the last time being about, oh boy, over 20 years ago. I have a few things outlined. We're going to go through it. Um, you know, mostly I think these, the power of attraction, first off, is very real. But it is pushed by the knot milk because it never gets to the part two, the worry about yourself part, the spiritual side. There's there's nothing about the real reason uh, in these books why, in my opinion, we're here in this place called Earth. It's about basically using the law of attraction and the powers that real people do have. These books are correct in a lot of the ways they make their presentations, but it's about getting crap, accumulating stuff, materialism, amassing Rothschild 3D printed trinkets. It's, that's what these powers of attractions, laws of attractions, books and seminars are always used to get you more engaged in the not nilks society and culture. Never for anything positive for yourself to more, and get that magenta speedboat you always wanted. I remember, I've probably told you this before. First off, again, I believe this power of attraction, it works. This is the way reality works. This is why, in it, to a degree, fake it to make it works. We'll talk about that. I remember somebody at Penn State that was a year ahead of me making this. I've told this story once before, but most of you haven't heard it. Making this, this is back in the 90s, making this collage. And they have a family with a large house and a dog and boats. And <laughs> they have cars and riches and the diamond rings. and this, They're cutting and pasting on this poster board. What, what are you doing? That's not, that can't be for a Penn State class. We, we graduated from nursery school, didn't we? What the hell are you doing with that Elmer's glue? I'm going to put, I'm putting you, know, Matt, what you do is you put this up on the wall and you just stare at it. And you believe in it, the power of it, it will come to you someday, these riches, if you look at it long enough. And to a degree, it is the, you know, it stems right back through the 1929 Secret of the Ages, the book that I'm holding here, and Wallace, what is it, Waddles or something? 1910. That's what the Dot Nook always cycles this back around. So at least in the modern era, it was 1910 first, Wa Wallace, Waddles, was it? Matt, if you put the W's on the side, it's the 33. Let that go. Let that stuff go. Come on, man. 1910, The Science of Getting Rich. Then the other big milestone was the book I'm holding, Robert Collier, The Secret of the Ages, then rekindled big time in the mid-2000s, I don't know, 2004 to 2006, Rhonda Byrne, The Secret, The Book, and a movie. I think that I came across the movie on Amazon. If the movie's on Amazon, uh, they yeah, certainly want uh, people engaged in this as much as possible to manifest what the not milk wants, not to manifest for yourself. It, it, it made me it knows certain people are going to manifest. So it gets to people and say, manifest your Rothschild 3D printed crap, not manifest anything positive for yourself. That's what it's a ninth inning hijack as usual. But this, the principle is very real. Matt, are you going to try to, have you ever tried to use it? Are you going to use the principles to get your junk? I don't give a shit. I just want to be able to eat my chunky soup, be left alone, and pet my two cats. So let me read a little bit of the introduction here, just to give you an idea of what is being presented. 1929, Secret of the Ages, with introduction, it looks like by his Robert Collier's son, so written much later. The world is yours when you master the secret of the ages. You can have anything you want, money a better job, honors, time for travel, for study, for good times, recreations, the love of those dear to you, anything that is good. Those things aren't, how do those things aren't good? That's not milk junk. Matt, just read it. Stop with the commentary. When you learn the secret of the ages and find your powerful inner mind deep within you, 
Look deep within yourself, Clarice. Why, Dr. Lecter? Why, Dr. Lecter? So you can manifest Rothschild's junk on your own without the auction. Skimming through the pages, you know, this is one of the original kind of self-help, get-rich books, but not get-rich-quick. Again, it's not fraudulent. It, it is from what people like you and I are trying to do with this earthly experience. This, this power of attraction is very real, at least for some people. We'll talk about this is not fraudulent. This is not get rich quick or some scheme. As, you know, some letter comes in from Morocco. If you could just deposit all your money in this bank and we could have it for just 24 hours, you'll then get 10,000 times back and you'll be rich too. It's not a scheme. Reality, at least for some types of people, absolutely works this way. It's why it keeps coming around over and over again. It's not a fraud. Preface What are the odds against you retiring wealthy? blah, blah, blah. You can get what you want out of life. The power within visualization uh, talks about the inventions, great inventions like the locomotive. And it says these things are not the result of invention. The laws that make all these things work existed from the beginning. It merely waited for a man or a woman to learn how to apply it. If a man had known how to call upon the universal mind to the right extent, he could have applied the law of sound waves, the law of steam, invented these things years ago. All this stuff is out there. As he referenced the acre of diamonds, which they do pass off as a supposedly real story. Poor farmer, who knows, somewhere in Africa, some plot somewhere, just red rocky soil in his crops, he could barely feed himself like Jed Clampett. And he said, enough of this horse shit. I'm, I'm going off to find my fortune in the world. And then he, you know, he failed or whatever he's trying to do, be a pimp or something. And he came back and right on his land was a diamond mine. It wasn't rocky. It, they were giant chunks of diamond. That poor son of a beach, he sold the damn thing for a penny. And then they're pulling out $40 million an hour out of that place. He got, And then he was upset and he realized the diamonds and the riches were right there in front of me the, the whole time. Here's something I highlighted in yellow. Mar I must have been very impressed with this quote. A highly magnetized piece of steel will attract and lift a piece of unmagnetized steel 10 times its own weight. Demagnetize that same piece of steel and it will be powerless to attract or lift even a feather's weight. You have to only imagine vividly enough on your subconscious mind the thing you wish. For the most part, this is true. Reality will eventually reflect not what you want, but what you expect. You have to take it. From, look, this, I'm not turning this into a self-help secret. I think this is a bunch of horseshit to brainwash people to get back in the not nilled rat race and try to get the Rothschild shit. Uh, it, it's not used for the type. You can't use this, in my opinion, for the part two, the worry about your stuff, the stuff that matters to most of us. But nevertheless, I found the old book. It's interesting. And we'll explore it. If you, you can, in this world, turn yourself into a not milk junk Rothschild <laughs> manifester of its stuff. If you announce that this is what you expect and you're willing to play the not milk's game and run its rat race to get it, you will get it. Now, I don't think it'll ever put you in what it calls up in, at highest level in the org chart with the old money or bloodlines. It'll always consider even little manifestors of the secret or the secret of the ages, a little great unwashed proletariat manifestors. But these types of people that can manifest, they do the not nilks bidding. I mean, somebody builds these bridges in these cities and runs these stock markets, and they need people to fully engage in this. This world relies on a lot of junk and a lot of stuff. Speaking of Henry Ford's phenomenal success, his friend Thomas Edison said of him, stay gold pony. No, he didn't say. It. He said he draws upon his subconscious mind. Decide now what it is that you want in life, exactly what you wish your future to be. Plan it out in every minute detail. It's all real stuff, guys. Vision it from start to finish. Put it in your mind's eye. See yourself as you are now doing those things with your harem. No, it doesn't say that. Do what you always wanted. Picture every detail. Make it real in your mind's eye. Then feel it. Smell it. This is why fake it to make it works. I read this book, but I never really did these exercises because deep down, I, I didn't really give a shit about magenta speedboats. Skipping around undiscovered deposits of energy, wisdom, and ability. Sound these depths. <laughs> Bring these treasures to the surface 
and you gain an astounding wealth of new power. Bring these treasures to the surface. To me, it sounds like calling forth a demon, a materialistic demon of some sort. No thank you, Mr. Collier. Continuing, the first essential is to realize that you possess the power. Your first objective is to get acquainted with it. Know you have this power. Psychologists and metaphysicians, oh, we got to adopt that word, we're metaphysicians. Psychology and metaphysicians the world over agreed on this, that, the mind is all that counts. You can be whatever you make your mind up to be. Be all that you can be in the Army Reserve. Remember that? Anybody over age 45? This part talks about the power of the unconscious or subconscious mind. You know I'm a big believer in that. This little thing that we think in, a frontal lobes, some would say. We think through English, the, where the ego resides. This is a tiny little insignificant thing, in my opinion, that's built itself up to be so important and all there is. Well, anyway, it says here, the subconscious mind is a distinct entity. It occupies the whole human body, and when not opposed in any way, it has absolute control over all functions, conditions, and sensations of the body, while the objective conscious mind has control over all our voluntary functions. You so sure about that? The conscious mind has control over all voluntary functions. The conscious mind in almost everybody that walks this thing called Earth is tricked I'm not sure it has control over much of anything. It's like Bane, Batman 3 with Christian Bale. Wait, don't leave. I'm in charge. Do you feel in charge? (laughs) Sorry. Regarding the unconscious or subconscious mind, it says here, this was the only mind animals had before the evolution of the brain. Uh, Oh, no. Robert, no. I thought so highly of you. Animals had this only before, and we were animals, before the evolution of the brain. Oh, you're not saying it evolved like that guy. What's his name? Darwin. Come on, man. Collier, we don't believe in that horse shit anymore. There's more here, guys. I'm not going to read it. But generally, we agree. I think most of us would agree with Collier that this subconscious and unconscious, of course, is extremely powerful. And most people walking the street uh, don't give it uh, that credit and have really no idea what Collier or what we would be talking about. They believe this thinking part of the brain, this ego mind, is really all there is. As I have have other metaphors, maybe in one of my book or analogies, it's a pilot that's flying the plane that doesn't realize there's anything else behind him, doesn't even realize there's a plane and other passengers and flight attendants and engines. He just thinks the pilot, he thinks he's doing everything, the little idiotic ego mind. In the book, Practical Psychology and Sex Life by D- David Bush. <laughs> we'll get back to that. What a, how, how ironic. Dr. Wynne Bigler is quoted as going even further. To quote him, it is this mind that carries on the work of assimilation and upbuilding whilst we sleep. It reveals to us things that the conscious mind has no conception of until the consummations have occurred. It can communicate with other minds without the ordinary physical means. This here is very poignant, whatever that means, talking about the subconscious, the unconscious. Huge ocean that most people aren't even aware of, that it exists. It gets glimpses of things that ordinary sight does not behold. It warns of approaching danger. It approves or disapproves of a course of conduct and conversation. It carries out all the best things which are given to it, providing the conscious mind does not intercept and change the course of its manifestation. It heals the body and keeps it in health, if it is at all encouraged to do so. It is, in short, a powerful and beneficent force, but like a live electric wire, its destructive force is equally great. It can either be your servant or your master. It can bring you good or evil. This is exactly right. And the not milk knows all about it, and many or most of its buttons and levers, reality buttons and levers, are designed at getting to a real person's subconscious unconscious so they can manifest what it wants, destroy its own self from within. I mean, you know, here it gets glimpses of things the ordinary sight does not behold, but the whole world is set up so you not believe, you don't believe that inner tuning fork, inner knowing. Only what the senses provide is all that matters, <laughs> according to Not Milk and Stephen Hawking types. It warns of approaching danger, a gut feeling, of course. But what, what school helps kids um, get in touch with gut feeling? None of them. 
If there's a teacher somewhere that tries to teach her or his fifth grade class about let's get in touch with our inner voice, inner knowing, a guide, something that sees more than we can see with the regular eyes, any any teacher go off syllabus and start talking about that, they'd be thrown out on the ass so fast, they'd be thrown out without a pension put out in the street so fast. You don't go there. You teach Common Core. You teach that these history books are correct, sir. Then you can keep your job. Page 17, Dr. Carl Jung, celebrated Viennese specialist. I never (laughs) heard it quite like that. He claimed that the subconscious mind contains not only all the knowledge that it has gathered during the life of the individual, but that it contains all the wisdom of past ages as well. That by drawing upon its wisdom and power, the individual may possess any good thing of life, from health and happiness to riches and success. This is interesting here, or coming to page 22. Maybe I'll have to backtrack my quick accusation of Mr. Collier just a bit. Whatever good you may desire, it can bring you, you know, the power of the subconscious unconscious. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Now, at least he's going to that arm of the Vitruvian man. At least here is a mention of what you could call the spiritual side. Remember last Sunday at freevoice.io, we got on James Joyce. For in his work, Dubliners, and the final short story, The Dead, not introducing the spiritual side at all. How do you... Oh, come on. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, no. Mr. Nolan, I'm not going to do it. Um, We got on James Joyce. You know, how do you write a short story called The Dead and not mention the spiritual side, or at least... uh, and nothing. It's just the oh, the snow's falling on the grave of Michael Fury. Poor Michael Fury. So it's some of that stupid line. Snow is general across the all of Ireland or whatever. That's horseshit. Anyway, so at least okay, we got to give Collier some credit. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Finally, somebody pushing forth this powerful attraction nonsense is bringing in. Maybe he brings in further the spiritual side. We have to be open to it. it reminds me of that scene in Thirteen Hours. What is it? The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. I like the movie. I think the story is a. Uh, We'll just say for this platform, uh, questionable. But it says, Boone, he says, give me something, Boone. He says, all the heavens, all the hells are within you. And I like that. I think all the heavens, all the hells are within you. Uh, manifesting, ma- creative beings manifesting. The kingdom of heaven isn't out there. Collier says it's within you. So we'll give him a little credit and be open-minded to his horse shit going forward. All right, look down here. This is interesting. An understanding of this explains the power of prayer. The results of prayer are not brought about by some special dispensation of providence. God is not a finite being to be cajoled or flattered in turning the page, in doing as you desire. When you pray earnestly, you form a mental image of the thing you desire, and you hold it strongly in your thought. Then if you have the necessary faith that you are receiving— the things asked for, your superconscious mind, which is part of the universal or God mind, draws to you enough of the creative force to fill out the image you are holding in thought and bring it into being. Throughout the Old and New Testament, you find the assurance that we are sons of God, partaking of all his power, that nothing is impossible to us. And from earliest records in time, a few have proved this to be so. It goes on, Jesus cured the sick, Jesus did this and that. Whence comes such power? Where but from our part of divinity itself, from the superconscious mind, which is part of the universal or God mind? Most of us think of mind as being merely the conscious part of us. But from the earliest Greek religious writings, we have been taught that man is a triune being, T-R-I-U-N-E, a triune being. First, the physical or conscious self. Second, the subconscious, sometimes called the inner mind, because it is latent within you. And third, the superconscious or higher self. Hmm. Go back 2,000 years before Christ to the, I can't pronounce it, or earliest religious books of India, and you will find the same belief. The Great Pyramids were triangular on each side, exemplifying the idea you find on many of their monuments. The Egyptians believed that the Ka, or higher self, could separate itself from the body at will and perform any service that was required of it, regardless of distance. You can send your higher self to do your will, as Jesus sent his to cure the centurion's servant. 
All around you is the vital force of the universe. Universe is capitalized, the material of which everything is made. And you, and caps, are a creator with the God-given power to use that vital force as you please, to make of it what you will. But to create anything of good of good requires four things. One, the mental image of what you want. Two, knowledge of your inner power, so you can consciously draw to you all the vital force you need. Three, faith in your creative power. Faith to crystallize the vital force around you. Four, doing something to convince your subconscious mind and through it, the superconscious that you do believe you have received. For example, a woman who prayed to get a house, she went and got a board and nail and kept them before her, affirming that they were the beginning of the house. This is very similar, by the way, guys, to the person that puts those little clip-out cuttings of the family life they want or the riches they want on that poster board we talked about earlier. Always remember, your mind is but a conductor, good or poor, as you make it, for the power of the, in caps, universal mind. Okay, flipping pages here, page after page of desire and developing the strong desire and focused energy to get what you want. And then you come across chapter six, the master formula for getting what you want. You may have anything you want, you poor son of a bitch, (laughs) provided that one, you know exactly what you want, Ernie. You want that air in that bottle, don't you, Ernie? Two, you want it hard enough. Ernie, you can't live without that air in Lefty's bottle. Three, you confidently expect to attain it. Ernie, how nice will that air in the bottle be when you bring it back to Bert? Four, persistently determine. You're determined to obtain it, even if you have no nickel to give Lefty. Are you willing, five, to pay the price to attain it, even if you have no nickel? Ernie, what are you willing to do to Lefty to get that air? Chapter 7, putting power into your desire. So he talks about techniques. It's not just the desire itself. You have to properly energize your desire to get what you want from the Christie's auction and the Rothschild stuff that's put up before you that you really, really want in your house. You need to picture that Rothschild junk in your house. Guys, look, look, a little bit of credit, the universal mind, higher self, does reference God, God is within you. At least the spiritual side is coming up. But if anybody's screaming at me, you know, there's a lot of people triggered in our community and other communities about the word new age. New age! This is the very definition of new age and what triggers people by that concept. Me, I don't just label something and say, oh, I can't touch it. I'll listen to anybody and I'll take a few pieces of good away from it and I'll reject what needs to be rejected. Just like this book. It's a lot of truth in here manifesting things, the reality reflects back what you expect. There's a ton of truth in here. I'll take what I can use and I'll reject the rest. I'm not just going to put a label on it and reject it all. Look at this. Part three, secret number three, find your goal and purpose in life. Yeah, we're all for this. What does he have to say? Let's Stored in every human being are great reserves of energy of which the average individual knows nothing. That's true. No doubt about it. Most people are like a man who drives a car in low gear, not knowing that by the simple shift of a lever, he can set it in high gear and not merely speed the car up, but do it with far less expenditure of power. I don't love the analogy, but that's true. The law of the universe is the law of supply. You see it on every hand. Nature is lavish in everything she does. Look at the heavens at night. There are millions of stars. There are millions of worlds, millions of suns. Oh, no. Okay, Matt, just give it. It's 1929. Give him a pass for believing in Carl Sagan's universe. You've got to give him a pass. Bottom of page 87. So don't go out seeking wealth. Look within you for ideas. (laughs) Look within yourself, Clarice. The kingdom of God is within you. Okay, this part here is absolutely true. See the things you want as already yours. This is a quantum principle that is just how the reality works. Understanding this probably starts with the worst thing you can do, or the antithesis of this is, I'll start tomorrow, whatever it may be, kicking your addiction, or I'm going to lose 15 pounds, but you know, for now, I'm going to eat the cake and I'll start tomorrow. Start tomorrow never works. Not only has it has to start immediately when you realize it, you have to believe it's already done. This is the principle here. There was a a dietician, 
uh, I don't know what you call these people, but it was more of a psychological counseling to help people lose a lot of weight. I've, I've talked about this story a few times over the years. I don't think this person was aware of the reality principles or the, quote, quantum principles behind this, but nevertheless, this diet advisor who might have had a, you know, a, a psychology degree of some kind knew that it, they had to convince the person who wanted to lose, you know, in this case, I guess there was severe cases, a hundred or more pounds, had to convince them they had already won. So in this article talked about, just act like you've already gotten there. See that you've gotten there. Not that it will come or putting on the calendar, the date you want to achieve it, absolutely the worst thing you can do. You're already there. Step into it. Of course, it's not going to immediately materialize and the 100 pounds won't shed off, but just start operating like you've won. I mean, it, like you're already achieved it, but yet do what you need to do because once you already achieved it, at least from this diet perspective, you can't just go right back to gigantic chocolate cakes. You have to you know, eat smart and, and exercise, et cetera, whatever it takes. But the, the opposite is I'm going to start tomorrow. And the opposite and worst thing is to get a calendar and say, by this date, I will have kicked this addiction. And no, you've already done it, even if you haven't already done it. I know that's hard to, to grasp, but that's the basis of the concept. And per reality, manifestation, all that, this is absolutely how reality works. Now, this is why, in my opinion, fake it to make it works. To fake it to make it is a little sick, if you ask me. I don't know why I looked into it eight, seven, or eight, nine years ago. I talked about it once on the channel. I wasn't looking into it for anything that I was going to do with it. The only thing I really remember when I looked into fake it to make it was, I don't know, a lot of examples or an inordinate amount of examples of people that wanted to get into like thug lifestyle or gangs or drug dealing or DJs or I don't know, uh, you know, hip hop or something, you know, so maybe it, it was like, it was named Brad in Malibu, <laughs> Malibu's Most Wanted, be rad in Malibu or whatever, but that's not a good example because that's, that's really who he was apparently in the movie, but most fake it to make it. The person, okay, wakes up, there's some rich little kid in Bryn Mawr, Ardmore, Pennsylvania, and they just want to be in thug lifestyle. So immediately they start dressing that way and start acting that way. And initially they know they're not that, but they start they fake it to make it and to get involved in some way in that lifestyle. And they convince themselves and they want to be that. And they just, all of a sudden, the reality starts almost being fooled that they are that. Or the reality says, wait a second, is this some rich little white kid in, in the um, dude I lost my car red and blue jumpsuits? <laughs> Where do we get these jumpsuits? Or is this, the reality gets confused, like is this person really in this lifestyle? And then the lifestyle so some way starts coming to them. I, I Look, I don't remember all the details, but this is, this like quantum principle is they, they start believing they've already done it or they want it so bad, they themselves start to get a little fooled, but then the lifestyle starts to come to them. It's similar to what happened in Be Rad, Malibute, and Malibu's Most Wanted. I mean, he believed that's who he was. He said, that's who I am, legit. But he all of a sudden, you know, because he was, he was acting like that, he did find himself in the middle. He was kidnapped, but he found himself in the middle of a gang shootout or gang life. And this gives me the opportunity to do one of the things I love to do more than anything else in the known world. Gladys, when they're going to leave our people alone? I don't know, baby. I just don't know. He seems to touch on this in a part where he says, do you have money worries? Somebody that's constantly stressing and worrying, he, he would say that is the worst possible thing to do. You're manifesting, you're announcing to reality that you are broke and we'll get more broke and you have all sorts of money issues and all sorts of money problems. He would say, um, although, you know, again, I'm just interpreting, it doesn't say this right in front of me, but to do to, to do the fake it to make it in this regard, the opposite. No, you could be have five cents in your bank account, no money worries. Act, walk down the street as if 
money will come to you. And with pure, you have most of this book is not about just telling yourself to falsely believe it. This book is to get you, it's very repetitive, but the key is to get you to believe in every fiber in your being you have that power or this flood the universal mind will open up to you. Not fake it to make it, but walk down the street knowing that there are no money problems, that it will come right as very soon to you. It's not, again, it's not just putting that, it's the having the complete faith and belief. That is the repetitive nature of this book. And some people will be triggered by the way that's put. If you don't like belief, the knowing that there is no money problem. Okay, if you, that's, some people are triggered. That some, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you understand what, what complete confidence, okay? Then we don't have to use belief or knowing. Matt, there's lie and believe. I never knew that. I'm gonna shut down the channel and cancel this video. Okay, I flipped through another 30, 40, 45 pages. And, you know, just a, a general summary of some of the things being said. This is why somebody in a, like a, what they consider to be like a dead end job, but it's a good job. They'll never get anywhere. They'll never accomplish anything. They'll never, you know, again, most of these books are about making money and success as the not milk defined success. So we'll keep it in those terms for now. But someone may say, on paper, this job makes sense. I'm good at what the job description's asking me to do. It's kind of close to home. You know, there's no excitement. There's no passion. Okay, you can go in and maybe keep that job for 10 years, but you'll never get anywhere. You'll never truly succeed. You'll never, it doesn't matter on paper how well your abilities match up. It's, you have to have the passion, the fake it to make it people, again, they they want, they're faking it, they want to be involved with more than anything else in the world in what they're trying to be involved in. So at the very minimum, I mean, if there's any younger person listening, I mean, in any occupation, you know, even if a lot of these, these techniques are not going to kind of work for you, what always will work for you that will employ or, or uh, use a lot of these techniques is doing what you like. Okay, doing what, whatever this guy is calling the universal mind or the way reality works or quantum attraction, doing what you like and, and having that spark of excitement, will that will almost ensure success. If you truly can't wait up, you know, now how many people, you know, Matt, we got to pay the bills. How many people truly do what they like? I hear you. I hear you. It's not easy. But, you know, but and not, and not everybody's starting out in life. You know, if you've got three kids and you do a job, well, you got to do that job. You got to put the, but somebody that is age 20, you know, has the opportunity to, to take three years and to really get involved in something, even if they have to start faking it to make it, really get involved in something they're extremely passionate about. There's almost, you almost can't fail if you get yourself involved in that situation where the opposite would be, you know, for, for years, I sold insurance products where I didn't like the product, but it was, I knew it was selling well. I knew the commission paid well. I knew it could pay my bills and just enough came in to pay the bills. There was no success. I had no passion for it, but on paper, I knew this segment or these corporate entities that I was trying to sell them, sell it to, they had people overseas, expatriates, things like that. I knew they all needed it desperately. So, but that's not enough. I didn't care about it. I had no passion for it, even though, as you can imagine, I, I gave a very solid and legitimate presentation when I had the opportunity to. It wasn't enough. There was no universal spark behind it. I mean, I, I paid my bills and that was it. It went nowhere. It doesn't matter if it was necessary or they needed it. I, it just didn't, I had no, I didn't care. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't dread it, but I didn't like it. it. It just, there was no spark whatsoever. And that is absolutely needed for the way this reality works. So earlier I said, these techniques do work, whether you want to assign the word quantum attraction or however you want to explain it, these techniques do work. But I also suggested ninth uh, inning hijack. And what I mean by that, and I still believe it is a ninth inning hijack, because here, okay, this the best way to explain that is here's selected books by Robert Collier. It's all about not milk stuff for the most part. Now it talks about higher self a bit and universal mind, but what is the ultimate outcome in this? Uh, it's the same as the secret, the law of attraction, more stuff, riches, all the stuff that not milk wants people to strive for. 
So here's books by Robert Collier, Copywriting and Direct Marketing, The Robert Collier Letter Book, How to Make Money at Home in Your Spare Time, The God in You. How do you go from how to make money at home in your spare time by mail to the God in you? The Magic Word. I guarantee they're all about, in a way, financial success, as this one is, The Secret of the Ages, The Secret Power, Riches Within You, The Law of Higher Potential, Be Rich, The Science of Getting What You Want, The Book of Life. Okay, so... If you want to expose basically how the reality works, the not milk will probably raise its head up out of the water and say, what's this person doing over here? And oh, but you're going to use these techniques, these quote quantum techniques or whatever to get stuff, to achieve success as the not milk defines it. Oh, that second beach home or the key to the city. Oh, then you want to tell people how to get on not milk junk. You're free to talk about this stuff. Okay, let's back up for a second. What's basically the only thing that most of us or the old guard cares about at this point in our lives? We care about, look, I'm not telling you, but you know, the video has to continue. Many of us share this belief. I can't speak for everybody, of course. Matt, just get to it. We understand you can't account for everybody. Sorry. We generally want to get out of this life what our spiritual whole needs out of this life. So basically, it can all come to an end. So we can, for lack of better words that triggers people, graduate, okay? Nothing that this world defines as success is at all involved in our part two, the worry about yourself work. Completely different things, completely separated. What does my spiritual whole need out of this experience so we don't have to keep doing it over and over? Or what your belief set is, or reincarnation, or having to come back to achieve it all. So again, why I call this sort of stuff a ninth inning hijack, the principles are sound. The principles, how reality works, are sound. But then it's always used in the ninth inning to go get more fame and fortune and success, as the not note defines it, and stuff. And the secret brought it back in the early 2000s. And the the movie that I watched 20 minutes of on, whether it's still on Amazon or Netflix, um, you want to get diamond rings and you want to get an expensive car. It's all about, it's 90%, 95% about using these reality principles to get materialism. It's a ninth inning hijack. So what we have to consider, are any of these principles necessary or helpful in getting what we want or what the old guard would want out of the reason we're living this life? And there could be some, I need to think about it before this last segment, but there could be some application. And if anybody's saying, well, if there could be some application and things that even we could use that it did not know because playing a dangerous game, putting that out before us, because it doesn't, the whole point of the not milk and its minions is to get in our way. So it, it blocks us from what we're doing, what we're supposed to do, quote, here spiritually for our whole. But it could be some sort of a stuffed linen. It might be put out under the guise of getting more materialism when we can use certain aspects of it to do what we need to do here spiritually. And maybe contractually, it must put it out or remind us about certain principles that could work for us. So I just need to take a few minutes and think about this for a minute before uh, the summary segment, the last segment. One of the most interesting things that Tony uh, stressed to me, um, higher self Tony, not the Tony friends, two different people, not my friend Tony that thought The Force Awakens was pretty good, um, stressed that basically we get, going into the moment of death, we get what we expect or believe or some would say no. That is why one of the reasons it makes sense why the not milk is trying to fool us our entire lives into powerlessness, into hopelessness, into we can't do it ourselves, and we need help. And what will we do when those archons come? We have no power. And you know, so you just you you have to know that you decide everything. See, that is one of the principles that those Collier book kind of stresses over and over. Remember the person that has 50 cents in the bank account. It's not just hoping that the money will come. It's walking down the street knowing that, you know, that through whatever techniques or the universal mind or however Collier presents it, I don't agree with a lot of the way he presents this stuff, of course, but it, it is coming to you. And it's like, it is a, like a knowing or a full and absolute uh, commitment of belief or a confidence. And some of these techniques, um, you know, if you avoid the ninth inning hijack, that you don't, 
you know, don't you don't use them to get a second beach home or to get a big job promotion and it, to translate all these techniques into the material wealth and the not milk definitions of success, but to translate some of them into you know the mindset into taking that into the moment of death, the confidence that we we've learned full knowing that we've learned everything we could learn in this place. We don't need to do it again. We're not going to do it again. Full confidence. We've gotten every drop as you know, out of the washcloth, that old analogy, just keep bringing it out. We've gotten every drop, not that we have to be perfect, every drop that we're able to get out of it. Now, again, when you wring the washcloth, it's still wet, right? We're not going to be perfect in this body. We've got every drop out of it for our spiritual whole. And knowing that going in, uh, to our later 10 or five or years of the moment of death. that These techniques, in a way, are they are reminders to us, if you believe in what Tony presented, that, you know, he says, you, you fear certain things at death, or you expect certain things, and you will manifest that on yourself. And uh, that doesn't mean you're doomed forever, but you could be in a, you know, put yourself in a loop or be in a situation where it could take a whole other set of lifetimes to recognize you're in a a false reality that you've constructed for yourself, you know, who knows? I mean, but I'm just, but it, it is um, using some of these principles. I mean, I think we can apply some of them. And I like, you know, really the confidence and the knowing that we, we've absolutely done enough. And there's no trick that could stop us, no games that could be played at the moment of death. Um, we've done everything we possibly can here for a spiritual self. So, you some might say the not dog then if we could if we could use some of these techniques or at least to re- remind us of certain things we need to do as we somewhat approach the moment of death then that's a dangerous game the not nook's playing because it could be revealing something we can use and we in the old guard here we we're not going to be we're not going to fall for the ninth inning hijack where it's trying to take these reality techniques and turn them into materialism but it might have to put these it might have to remind us of that, that these techniques in this reality are valid for, from a stuffed Lenin or Humpty Dumpty perspective. Contractually, this not milk seems like it has to do things from time to time that benefit us, that have to reveal to us certain things. It's part of the, the game that's playing, being played here and the why it needs to operate behind a trick. So I don't, but I don't, if anybody's like, well, maybe I should go read the book. No, I, I don't suggest it. No. Um, these are things we generally know anyway, and, and it's just, I mean, no. I mean, I, I don't think there's any need to buy this sort of book or any other uh, Power of Attraction book, unless you're, again, I, I take that back. If you, some of these tech, you know, somebody that's listening to me could be 22 years old, and they have a whole life ahead of them where they have to be productive in something called the workforce and gainful employment, and they pr- want to have a family. And, you know, you have to, people generally, we have to operate Inside not milk society, most of us are not out in a cardboard box somewhere. So these techniques uh, for a younger person listening, starting, these are real. These are real. Never get involved in a dead-end situation you don't care about. Always have that spark of, of you like to a degree what you're doing or ex- ex- spark of excitement. Or sometimes it, maybe it, you don't like the job, but you, you're so in love with what the job can give you. You could use it in what the way Collier would present it in that way, like the job, okay, you're so in love with maybe you want to start a family and have the money to have a house and, and have a, a large family so appealing to you that maybe the job on its own could be sit- can be considered dead end and some corporate cubicle for a hundred thousand dollars a year. But that what it's giving you, what that corporate cubicle is allowing you to do is so important to you that the passion can be directed in that way. And that then it moves beyond, it's larger than the job itself. So th- these are, you know, these techniques are important, I think, for, you know, anybody under age 35 should be aware of them and use them throughout their uh, gainfully employed. I mean, for me, I just, I don't give a shit. Matt, don't you want to use these techniques to get a little something for yourself? Not, I don't know. Don't care. Won't use them. I don't give a shit about getting anything more for myself than what I can put down in front of a cat. Thanks for listening.